All right, joining me now here on The Matthew Filipovich Show is Professor Susanna Walters. Susanna is the director of the Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies Program at Northeastern University. She is the author of several books. Her latest is The Tolerance Trap, How God, Genes, and Good Intentions Are Sabotaging Gay Equality, which you can find at SusannaWalters.com. You can also follow her on Twitter at Susanna D. Walters. Susanna, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. So, Susanna, let's discuss, uh, let's begin by discussing kind of the core of the new book, which again, the book is called The Tolerance Trap. That being that the LGBTQ community is actually setting the bar too low by simply aiming for tolerance. Tell us about it. Well, let's let's be clear. Tolerance is certainly better than outright hatred, for sure. <laughs> I mean, I'll take sure. tolerance over being gay bashed. You know, there's, right. uh, tolerance is definitely a step up there. But when you think <laughs> about the word itself, you know, we tolerate things we would rather do without. So we, we tolerate, I'm a professor, I tolerate boring meetings, you know, or <laughs> irritating students who are grade grubbing, or we tolerate a boring movie. We don't generally speak about tolerating wonderful sex or yeah. tolerating a sunny day or the beautiful, you know, um, landscape in Cape Cod. So tolerance is, you know, really about something we would rather do without. We tolerate that which we would rather do without that, that we've already decided is somehow not so good. So it's a, it's a you know, a very low bar to set for human rights and for social rights and for minority inclusion. Um, and tolerance and acceptance are both sort of linked in our cultural imagination is that, you know, both, both the route and the end point. Um, what we want is a more tolerant society. We want to, you know, we want, you know, straight people should tolerate gay people. And again, I would say it's just a terribly low bar and a bar that I think undermines the potential to actually imagine uh, a more robust kind of inclusion. I, I guess I should also say that I don't think any social movement worth its salt has m sort of banked on tolerance or framed their discourse uh, around the language of tolerance. I mean, certainly the great social movements, the civil rights movement, the women's movement, didn't really talk about <laughs> tolerance, like tolerate my please gender. Tol please tolerate us. Yeah, please tolerate please. us women being allowed to vote. That's that doesn't right. happen. No. Right. Please yeah. tolerate my different skin color. Please tolerate <laughs> right. my, you know, um, the fact that I have different genitalia than you. You know, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, those social movements demanded equality, freedom, liberation, a transformed world. And they, you know, so think about the difference between tolerance and celebration of difference and an embrace of difference. That's really what we need to move towards. So let's discuss, I mean, you write in the book about kind of the dangers of the fact that, okay, so now uh, for the most part, it appears that, you know, gay marriage is, is you know, because of the Supreme Court, uh, it, we are headed in the right direction, pretty much state by state, it's getting knocked down. And so w there's, you know, it, it's it's progress in that regard. There's progress, obviously, in gays in the military. But you, you write about how that, that by strictly focusing on those two areas is also a, a dangerous uh, idea because there's so much more. So let's talk a little bit about about the danger of kind of focusing narrowly on those two areas of of equality. Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, I don't think I think there's a couple problems here. I think one <clears throat> is focusing just narrowly on two, you know, one or two, and at this point, really one issue. Um, but I think the other point, and I'll get back to that in a minute. But I think the other point is what it is what we might call the progress narrative that's going on here. And I think Americans are very apt to buy into a storyline that says about themselves, you know, we were racist, and now we have an African-American president. There's the race <laughs> problem gone. You know, we were sexist, and now there's equality, um, formal equality for women. Oh, there's no need for a feminist movement. You know, we, we were homophobic, and now there's gay marriage, and there's a couple <laughs> queers on television, and, you know, people coming out, and, and gay, ba gay basketball, and football stars. Oh, okay. We are post-gay. You know, the story's right. over. So I think there's that one point, and, and I think a major emphasis of the book is a sort of cautionary tale 
to say, if you tell the story that way, America, it actually disenables the possibility for moving, you know, for telling a more accurate story and for moving into a future. That that kind of inevitable progress story that we are just marching through, you know, what it does is obscure the continued realities of homophobia and violence and discrimination. Uh, so that's one part of it. The other part about marriage is a tough one because we have been victorious, and I want to celebrate that. It's been incredible. I, you know, growing up when I did, I, I can tell you I never imagined a day when, uh, you know, the states would be jumping over themselves and politicians would be jumping over themselves to declare themselves in support of same-sex marriage. Having said that, I think it is a terrible problem for a social movement when it puts all of its eggs in that basket. Uh, that, you know, it has become now uh, so, 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 you know, so much sort of uh, saturating our culture that gay rights has come to be seen as synonymous with gay marriage. If you Google, you know, gay rights, if you look at a poll, you're going to get gay marriage. It's going to all be seen as, the, you know, gay rights are the sign of gay marriage. And that's a problem because there's a lot of other issues out there. We can't even, we can't even seem to pass the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, for one. And yeah. so that's a terrible problem that, you know, gay kids are, are disproportionately among the homeless population. They're still getting kicked out of their homes, trans folks are still, you know, sites of discrimination and violence and so on. So the idea that, you know, we're in this rosy new rainbow colored world, uh, simply because a couple states have given us some basic equality <laughs> in the form of <laughs> marriage rights seems to me ludicrous. And it also, I guess, gets to my earlier point, which is that, you know, social, no social movement worth its salt banks on one, so on one particular civil right. I mean, again, look at the women's movement. Look at the civil rights movement. I mean, the women's movement, abortion rights are central, but so was pay equity, violence against women, you know, flexi time in the workplace. We could go down the list. And the same is true with the civil rights movement. So I do think we're at a real pivotal turning point when the movement has to um, push back against itself. Uh, and against, I, I think, sort of heterosexual goodwill towards marriage in that way, and say, look, this is this is an important right, but it's not all there is, you know, and it's not the sign of gay inclusion. It's a sign, but it's certainly not the sign.